right, the spring collections are continuing to roll out. I just had uh, Butter It Go Live earlier this week, and now I'm back with the McCall Pattern Company Spring Collection. So you can see there's a lot of fun changes to the website. Uh, in addition to their rebranding of their logo, we've got this fun springy purple header thingamajig, and they've also got their patterns kind of separated out a little bit. So someone's doing a little bit of studying about e-commerce and, and uh, making suggestions for how best to sell as many patterns as possible, which I'm here for that. I don't ever want to miss a collection. So, but today we're going to do my little review of the patterns and I've heard some good things. I've been trying to avoid all the spoilers, but if it's anything like uh, what Butter It put out, we are in for a real, real treat. And remember, I've been talking a lot to you guys about the differentiating of each brand. So Butter It is now going to be its own thing. Quick Sew is its own thing. McCall's has its certain demographic that it's trying to attract and Vogue does as well. And then I'm sure the Simplicity Catalog all goes the same way. This is just something that I've noticed, and a few of you are agreeing with me. From what I can tell, McCall's is going to be the young, trendy, you know, 20 year old type of garment. Not to say that people outside of those age ranges cannot make and wear these and look fantastic, but I think that the trends that we're gonna see here are geared more toward a younger demographic. You can already tell the difference between the the Butterick models versus these models. The Butterick models were 40s, 50s, 60s, and these girls are all gonna be in their late teens and 20s, I think. So we shall see. But the clothes, which was what we're really all here for. The other stuff's just interesting to me. Um, all right, first up, we've got Adrena. This is a dress with, it looks like a, like a twisted, stand collar, elasticated uh, wrist, uh, what are those called, sleeves, <laughs> um, waistband, and a couple of tiers, and this has been made out of like a, a chiffon or some kind of like lightweight woven, set in sleeve, which is really beautiful. And I'm actually kind of shocked that they pulled off this photo like literally in the rain. You can see all the raindrops. I'm sure like when they had this photo shoot scheduled and saw it was gonna rain that day, they were like, well, what are we gonna do? And they went and found this beautiful coordinating umbrella and had the girl hold the umbrella. I'm here for that. Okay, here's another view. This is really fun. It has more of a take on ruffles. So you've got this ruffly V-neck and I feel like this is pretty low. Uh, ruffle sleeve, you know, that's been um, elasticated at the wrist, and then three tiers. Beautiful illustrations again. This is a more simple version with just a sleeve ruffle and a skirt ruffle that still has the stand collar and the v-neck, but the v-neck looks raised on this one a little bit. And yeah, there's our model again. Here's the back. So the ruffle or the tears carry over to the back. Cute. I love this little ponytail. All right. There are our photos and um, illustrations for Adrena. So no, the V-neck is the same. I don't know why it looks so low. So the V-neck is the same on all three. Stand collar is consistent. You have a little bit of gathering here, the ruffle here, which does carry over to the back and nothing going on here, which is also interesting because the one the model is wearing, which is this one, definitely had something going on at the front neckline, right? I mean, so the I feel like the illustration doesn't show this being closed. It's a twisted thing, right? Am I missing something? That's as far in as I can zoom, so sorry. Um, anyway, so maybe something's going on there, but elastic waist dress has sleeve and skirt ruffle variations. Yeah, I feel like this is supposed to 
be different. Also, why does this look so short? <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> it looks like a tunic. Um, but I mean, it's pretty long-ish. Here's the yardage, crepe, chalet, georgette, and stable knits. Interesting. Uh, you need elastic. Yeah, a lot of elastic and single fold bias tape for B. What was B? Oh, maybe that's how single fold bias tape. I don't know what that would be for. Oh, maybe that's what you put in the wrist. Yeah, hard to say. All right. Uh, 6 to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing. And then here is your fabric requirements. And then they're only giving us the length for the finished garment requirements, finished garment measurements. Uh, quite a bit of fabric needed for this because you are doing all those tiers. So yeah, that makes sense. It's cute. It's, um, Probably not something I would go through the trouble of making just because I don't love baby hems and I don't love working with this type of fabric. I mean, yes, I could make it from a chalet. I don't know. Maybe. I like the idea of it a lot. It's not blowing me away, though, but it is really cute. I know there will be a lot of really great versions of it online. All right. Now we've got Aurora. Aurora is a off-the-shoulder elasticated waist. This might be a common theme for McCall's brand. Um, they had a lot of elasticated waists in their early spring collection and I'm already seeing two for two on the elasticated waist. So, um, but you've got one little ruffle here and then all these tiers, one, two, three, four, five, six tiers it looks like to create this, you know, dreamy prairie like maxi dress. Oh, that's a hot little number. Okay, this one, the elastication, elastic casing is higher up. This feels like an empire waist. Halter top and the strings for the halter top go through the top of the bodice. I want to see the back of this. This is real cute. There is a shorter version of what the model's wearing. So yeah, I feel like the design is for this to be higher. We'll go back and look at hers. Yeah, it's right under her bust. Her natural waist is more down here. And I'm pretty sure they made this out of just some kind of like wall possibly, 100% cotton. But man, oh man, will you be gathering for days and days. There's the back. This is so cute. Oh no, it got wet. So cute though. So the back of this is completely open. You guys, I'm here for that. You guys know I love an open back. Something about it for summer in the Carolinas. I don't know. I just, it's just in my soul. Um, and then the fact that this is so flowy and big and dramatic. I mean, it would be great like for a festival. Obviously they're canceling all the festivals, but um, any kind of tropical vacation, Miami, um, anywhere on the beach. Like I need this. These other versions, I don't love the off the shoulder situation because I feel like every time I raise my arm, the thing pops up onto top of my shoulder. Um, but this version is really, really cute. And I don't have anything in my stash that has this like tiered gathered skirt thing because they typically always look so little house on the prairie. But for whatever reason, this one looks kind of elevated to me. So there are bigger versions of our line drawings. And I like the elastication. Is that even a word? That's the second time I've said it. At the Empire waist. Um, that feels less constricting to me. Maybe because this doesn't fluctuate as much as the, my true waist does. Like, you know, when I eat and stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. The other versions are cute, too. All right, gauze, lawn, crepes, and stable knits. I feel like you can get gauze for sure 
wall, lawn, definitely for like really inexpensive, especially if you did it in a solid. Um, so here's your elastic, one inch elastic, three eighths inch elastic for the sleeve cuff on that first version, single fold bias tape for the backless version, a whole package of it. Is that what they are using for the ties? Yikes. Oh no. That's the cording here. Hmm. Single fold bias tape. Maybe it's for the bottom of that, this ruffle here, which you could just make your own so it would match. But six to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing. Yes, these, <laughs> these fabric requirements are going to be insane. But like I said, you can get some really affordable um, of those kind of lightweight cottons. I don't want to call them cheap. They're just inexpensive. So yeah, almost seven yards. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> that was Aurora. I like that name too. I mean, if we're doing the name thing, might as well embrace it. Can't beat them, join them. So I'll judge the name, sure. This is Maria. Maria, Maria. Maria is another off the shoulder elastic neckline, big voluminous sleeves. I don't know if this is a separate waist tie or like a cummerbund band or what, but then the skirt has a ruffles or pleating down into a more um, straight or A-line skirt. Again, in an, another sheer fabric. I'm digging this crown they gave her though. That's really pretty. So yeah, it looks to be a just a really wide sash. Here it is with like a short flutter sleeve and a ruffle. This is looking a lot like the first dress. Um, just like pattern hacks on the first one. We'll go back and look at that here in a second. I don't know if it's meant to be high-low, but there's something with the hem here. There it is in the back. That's pretty. Again with the hem though. Look at this. Again, it's those tricky fabrics probably, you know what I mean? Like those are just really hard to work with. But yeah, so we've got three takes on this. We've got um, a short flutter sleeve with a ruffle hem, long uh, like bell sleeves with nothing on the hem, and then lantern sleeves. And then here's your little cummerbund sash thingamajig. Um, okay, yardage. Cotton blends, poplin, or dotted Swiss. Okay. Um, elastic, elastic. Alphanumeric sizing this time. All the sizes are in one pattern envelope, so that's that's nice. Not that this is a pattern you really have to grade between because it is so voluminous and you're, all the cinching you're doing is with elastic and with a belt, but still, um, you might need to grade between sizes. And then here's the fabric requirements. So let's go back, if y'all don't mind, to the first one. I mean, this and this other than the neckline are pretty much the exact same thing. So I don't know. That feels a little like they cheated kind of like I don't know, maybe put both of these in one. I don't know. All right, this is cute. It might be knit. I thought those were buttons at first, but it's just the print of the dress. It looks like a little bateau neckline, waist seam, and another ruffled hem. Okay, there's a gathered skirt, maxi length. Very plain, straightforward, fit and flare dress. Here she is twirling. The back is nice. Okay, well, Ciella, I guess, is what this is called. I mean, okay. It's plain, but you know, sometimes those knit fabrics are so beautiful, you don't want to cut them up into a million pieces. So I can see how this would be appealing to someone. 
I'm sure I already have a dress like this in my um, stash though. So loose fitting, pullover dress, sleeveless, long and short sleeves, length variations, and then B has a hemline ruffle. And like I said, I'm pretty sure it's for knits. Yeah, 35% uh, cross grain stretch. Cotton knits are all that they recommend. Oh, sorry. Also jersey interlock and rib knit. Uh, half a yard of elastic again, and then seam biting. The elastic must be for the waist. Yeah. All right. So another elasticated waist. It's just not pulled super tight, I guess. All right. Then alphanumeric sizing again, but this time it's split up between two patterns. So extra small to medium in one and then large to 2X in the next one. They did give us a bunch of um, finished garment measurements here though. That's good. So I'd probably make the medium just because it's for knits. You know, you want it to be pretty close to your actual measurements, if not a little bit smaller, depending on the fabric you're using. Okay, now we've got this Lola. Is Lola the top? Okay, I think Lola's the top. So we talked about this in the Butterick um, collection, this square neckline. This one appears to be, not square, it's like squared off shoulders and then a sweetheart neckline with the sleeve ending, like there's no bodice part up here, the sleeves the end, of, I don't, the end of the sleeves make the top. You know what I'm trying to say? That's really hard to explain. Um, anyways, remember the Butterick one was too wide. And so her bra strap was showing and it just wasn't great. This one I feel like is a little bit better, but man, that also seems very, very wide. Um, I don't know why they just can't come in a little bit more, but I guess that's not really the look. I don't know. Um, you've got the little buttons with the loop, the self-fabric loops, and then like maybe princess seams that open out to make this like a little more full, and then the elasticated sleeve hem, kind of bustier-like. That one's really cute. I could see that looking good on a lot of different people. Oh, there's the back. Yeah, I mean, for what it is, I think that it's it's done well, designed well. I'm sure we'll get to the skirt here in a minute, and that is very short. Imagine if you were this lady. How cool would that be if you were like, um, that's my jacket. <laughs> Lola. I just wonder how many people with like anything above an A or like a small B cup are going to have with fitting this. I mean, it does have princess seams, so that makes it a little bit better, but yeah, it's okay. Not totally my style, but it's okay. It, it feels young, right? That's what we've kind of been talking about with this whole thing, with all the rebranding. These should feel a little bit young to me since I'm not in my 20s. Um, I'm actually <laughs> closer to 40 than 20. So, um, so yeah, I shouldn't associate with them totally. Some of them I will, some of them I won't. Semi-fitted button front top, shoulder straps, ruffle sleeve, puff sleeve, elastic upper and lower edges. Okay, yardage. Cotton blends, charmeuse, crepes, poplin. Yeah, shirtings, things like that. Buttons, bias tape and elastic. And then, yeah, look, you need like no fabric. 6 to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing there. Next up, we have the skirt friend of Lola. Oria, Oria. That's the thing about names. Like, 
I don't know how to pronounce that. Oria or Oria? No idea. Cute with the sweater though. Styled well, elasticated waist. And then you've just got your two tiers. There it is a little longer. I'm thinking that's maxi length. This one is just, the top tier is longer. She's like, I called my agent and he said, I don't have to take pictures in the rain. So find a building. <laughs> do you guys not do that? Like dream up these scenarios in your mind? <laughs> oh, my creativity never wanes. Yeah, this short version is short. I mean, I'm guessing she's like 5, 10 or 11 or something, but that is short. And just totally not my style. I have no interest in either one of these. It's just not going to be super flattering on me, I don't think. All right. Crepe de chine, chalet, crepe, and stable knits. And you need elastic. One yard elastic for the waistband. 6 to 14 and 14 to 22. And then, yeah, quite a bit of fabric for the maxi versions. Next, we have... Can y'all tell I'm getting a little bit bored? <sighs> okay, we have Pia. And I think Pia is just the top, yep. This is closer to my style, but dang with all the ruffles. Pia looks to be a, um, what were they called? Pillowcase dress, <laughs> remember that? Where you would take the pillowcase, sew a casing to the top and wrap some ribbon or something through the top. I'm sure we've all made that at some point in our sewing journey. Well, that's what Pia is, but Pia has a ruffle. Right? I mean, that's, that's exactly what it is. Here's Pia with two ruffles. It is cute, though. There's a reason why that pillowcase dress is so popular. I remember one time when I saw someone on Shark Tank uh, with, who was selling the pillowcase dress and something about there's like a charitable thing about it. Anyway, they invested in her. And I was like, what? I'm like, I could have done that. Okay. Hurry, hurry. I can't wait till we get to these pants. These pants are something else. Blurry picture, but at least they're giving us a bunch of pictures. I'll take that. I think I like this version a lot. I love anything with like a waist seam, you know what I mean? So this version's really cute. But I mean, guys, you can self-draft this. Like, it is not difficult at all. I know I'm gonna I'm about to say something that I might regret, but let me know if you guys would like a tutorial on how to make Pia um, without a pattern. It can't be that hard. I mean, then again, the patterns are like so cheap these days. I know they used to be cheaper, but they're still very affordable. All right. Pia, I would say, I will say though, is great for a beginner. So if you've just started sewing or just started garment sewing and you want to like, you know, elevate your look from like super basic stuff, this could be a good way to do it. Crepe, chalet, crepe de chine, and stable knits are the fabric requirements. All you need is some bias tape. Uh, extra small through large, alphanumeric sizing, all in one pattern. And then just this length measurement. All right. Are we going to get Pia's pants next? Yes. Next up. Simone. All right. You guessed it. Elasticated waist. And then I think one tier here possibly and another one here with some ruffles. 
I mean, honestly, I know I'm supposed to hate these because the line drawing is going to look insane, but they're actually kind of cute. I especially like them styled this way. I don't like it with Pia also on top. That just, I'm not here for that, but this is really cute and different. Yeah, okay, so there is like a princess seam and there's only half of it. So that maybe is what makes it look so flattering. I think if they went all the way around with all the gathering, that would be weird, but... Oh, look at that. Print mix. Guys, don't be mad at me, but I like these. Is this pant leg different than this pant leg? I think they're really cool. I need to see the line drawings for this because it feels like an asymmetrical pant, which is just... No, bummer. <laughs> I was really hoping that because I guess the pink panels are just hidden, you know. <laughs> Darn, I was really getting excited for that. Okay, so you have a like calf link cropped version and then you have your long version and then your print mix color block, which is just the same thing as this. I like this one. This one is the first one to get me super excited. Simone. Okay. I bet you need a lot of fabric. Oh, not that bad. So I would make B. And you'd need, for me, oh, alphanumeric sizing also. Extra small to medium and then large to extra large. The measurement at the hip line is going to be very forgiving. So I could make the large and yeah, just under three yards of fabric. I don't know. I kind of like it though. We'll see. I think the right fabric makes a big difference. We'll see what I have in my stash. If I can pull something like that out from my stash, that would be really cool. <laughs> I think maybe my style is a little hard to predict. I don't know. All right, next up we've got Loretta. Like Loretta Lynn possibly? Loretta is the top and the skirt, all in one. Uh, top, button, front with tucks and ruffle flanges. Sleeveless, long sleeves, skirt has elastic waist with double ruffles. So I think every single pattern we've looked at so far has had an elasticated waist of some kind. So this is pretty. So yeah, here are the pin tucks. This is gauze fabric, I think. And then this little ruffle thing. That's really cute. I mean, I wouldn't make a crop top, I don't think, but it is pretty. Definitely springy in a different color, be great for a wedding. Um, you could even sew these two things together and make a dress. So long as the pattern has a waistline mark and the skirt has a waistline mark, you sew them together at that line, add in your elastic, and you're good to go. Is the I thought high-low was kind of gone. I'm not really seeing high-low very much in ready-to-wear anymore. Here's the long sleeve version. And then the maxi version. I do appreciate the length of the front, like the shorter part. I feel like all the other um, skirts we've seen have had a much higher, like mid thigh on these super tall models, but hers is longer, which I kind of like. That's cute. Oh. Okay. All right. Loretta. Yeah, Loretta's line drawings look funky, but it looks cute the way that they made it. 
All right. There are those line drawings again. Oh, I got it wrong. There is only one skirt. So this skirt is the same as this skirt. Hmm. Okay. Well, thanks for all the extra pictures. Crepe, lawn, cotton blends, crepe to sheen, buttons, bias tape, elastic, ribbon, and elastic. And then here's your fabric requirements for the top and for the skirt. I hope they really are able to attract some younger sewists with these patterns. I mean, this is what you would find in like an H&M or uh, even like some of them like Ann Taylor Loft maybe. Um, I'm trying to think of like the younger, younger stores. Maybe like, uh, oh shoot. I can't think of, I'm thinking of Aeropostale and not Anthropology, maybe a little bit of Anthropology. I don't know. Neve. All right. Or Nev, like Nev Campbell. Neve. <laughs> I don't know. But what a fun workshop on lace would this be? I can't wait to get to the fabric requirements on this. That's pretty. This is really cute. And then there it is in all solid. Still sort of cute. You guys know I love a ruffle and it's hard for me to not like anything um, with a ruffle. Sorry, something caught my eye. Oh no, it's just dirt on my computer screen. <laughs> Never mind. All right, this is really cute. And I feel like I've seen this in Ready to Wear before. Actually, uh, gosh, not Banana Republic, Brooks Brothers, years ago when I lived in Charleston. So, and then a little, maybe four years ago, there was a top similar to this with like uh, Swiss dot and shirting. I have to see if I can find those pictures and I'll put them on Instagram. All right. Let's get to the fun part. Fabrics, lace or cotton blend crepe charmeuse. All right. So invisible zipper and then a whole bunch of three and a half inch to four inch scallop lace trim, and then a whole bunch of seven eighths inch scallop lace trim, and three quarter yards of half inch scallop lace trim. So there's really not that hard. I mean, they sell this trim at places like Joanne. You can obviously also get it online. Um, but I feel like they're making it pretty easy. I would try this just to learn how to do it. 6 to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing. And then I don't even know how you tell. So you just go buy lace fabric? Lace by the yard? What is that even for? I don't know. See what I mean? Like I just, I can't visualize. Like is this the three quarters of a yard? these little panels and then this is the three four inch hem this is the seven eighths inch trim and this is the half inch trim yeah I think that's probably how it goes together but they also have this and that's real cute I wonder if that's the selvage from something yeah this would be one of those where you get the pattern bring it home study it a little bit before you just run out and start spending all your money. All right, next. Lucia. Lucia is a crop top. Mrs. Wrap front has back ties, ruffle neckline, slit sleeve, and sleeve with button cuff. Uh, 
Okay, we've seen that a thousand times in different dresses. That looks a lot like that Alistair that they put out early spring. And there's a long sleeve with a slit. I mean, this is weird that it crosses so high. Guys, this is Alistair, almost exactly. If you go back, I mean, Alistair ties, I mean, the ties are longer, it ties in the front. And the only reason I remember that one and what it's called, it was the hot pink, like, poly or silk charmeuse one that they had last year, or uh, in early spring. And the only reason why it sticks out in my mind is because they are, like, trying so hard to make that a thing on Instagram. Um, they keep posting people's versions of it when they've made it. Uh... And just it, more than any other pattern, they've given that one a lot of attention on Instagram. So that's the only reason why it stands out in my mind. This is truly nothing special to me. I don't know. I just, I don't, it doesn't look comfortable. I wouldn't wear a shirt that doesn't tuck in. Um, yeah, I'm just like whatever about it. Yardage, crepe, long crepe to sheen, charmeuse, double fold bias tape and some buttons and then 6 to 14 and 14 to 22 on the size combos couple yards no finished garment measurements yeah this feels kind of like an afterthought like oh well I kind of already did most of the work for this other one and we'll just do in some new fabrics and change up the sleeve a little bit and bam whole new pattern all right this one's more expensive by like a dollar which I don't know why but um, this is, is that supposed to be Naomi and they misspelled it or is it Noemi? Noemi. No idea. But there's Butterick put out one similar to this. Remember that like shirt dress? Uh, oh God. Maybe like the second pattern in that collection. I can't remember. Anyways. We've also, I probably got one of these in my stash too, though, with this kind of sweetheart neckline, thicker strap, uh, princess seam, button front, patch pocket. You know what I mean? Like that whole thing. Definitely have seen this before. Here it is with the ties. No patch pockets. Strapless. It fits her well. Didn't maybe G just have something like this too? Not too long ago? I remember this is bringing me back to Mimi G. Was it yellow? Denim, twill, chambray, and cotton blends. You just need a bunch of buttons, six to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing. And yeah, they are gonna give us finished garment measurements here. So that's wild. View A, which is the strapless version, you literally need less than a yard and a half of fabric. I mean, granted, it's the strapless version and there's no boning or anything to hold it up. So I don't know how many people are going to be able to actually wear that. But <laughs> all of that to say, that's like no fabric. B, the one the girl is wearing, I think, yeah, with the thicker straps is a little more than one and a half yards. Same for C with the little tie straps. So that's kind of interesting. If you have like just a little bit of something left over from like a jacket project or jeans or something like that, you could turn it into this dress. And then here are your bust line and hip line measurements. So it is very close fitting. Um which puts me almost off the charts. I'd be somewhere around here. And then of course my bust is like way down here. This is why I don't make those darn fitted skirts. But it's not to say it can't be done. I just haven't found the energy or inspiration to try. I will one day. 
All right, the last page. Whoops. Oh Lord. Okay. We've got eight more. These look very bright and colorful. This looks a lot more promising. Okay, this is Gia. Gia is a button front. We might not have elastic in the waist. I know the last one we didn't either, neither did the top. So we're getting out of the elastic waist section. <laughs> and then something, maybe a raglan. This is, this is cute. Yeah, so raglan flutter sleeve. I love the self belt. The neckline is pretty, even the length is nice. Oh, a real, what is that? Like a double elastic cuff or something? Interesting, you've got a bust start here, gathered skirt. So again, nothing extraordinary in terms of design, but you can make some really cute stuff um, with just the basic designs and a really pretty fabric, you know? And it does not look like an elasticated waist I don't see one in sight. So, I also, do you guys, I've noticed the la this the last couple, the last dress and this one, the line drawing has a fuller hip drawn to it. Um, judging from the, judging from the um, finished garment measurements, they, they didn't actually do anything about their sizing. They're just drawing it to make it seem like they're drafted for fuller hips, possibly. I don't know, what are, what are you guys thinking about that? All right. Yeah, this looks like, how do you get your hand in? <laughs> right? It's like, maybe my pinky finger will fit through that. All right, crepe, chalet, crepe de chine, charmeuse, 10 buttons, elastic, yeah, one inch elastic twice, I think. And then D-rings for the belt. And then here's your fabric requirements. Okay. This one looks like we're gonna go to Havana and we're gonna have a really great time in those fancy colorful cars. Olivia. Olivia, like Olivia without the O. Okay. So again, this probably looks familiar to you where we have the tie front bodice. They did this a bunch last year. I even bought and made one. Um, this one is a dolman sleeve though with an elasticated uh, sleeve opening, ending. Um, then you have an elasticated waistband down into just a straight skirt with a ruffle. They did a great job cutting this out, I will say. Yep, there she is. My only problem is that with a dolman sleeve, you've got nothing to hold it up onto your body. Like there's no side seam, there's no arm side. And so this is gonna have the tendency to want to fall down and then you've got a nip slip. So unless, that version's real cute, unless um, with this ruffle detail and the, I think it's like a circle skirt maybe, unless you're using like tape or something, maybe they've got some trick for it because it does look like hers is real close to the body. So they've either taped it or it's constructed in a way where you don't have to worry about that. Just because you tie it tighter here doesn't necessarily remedy the problem either because that's just gonna pull from the sides. And you can tell they didn't really do that because all the stripes are still relatively straight up and down. Yeah, it's cute though. I wanna see what the notions are. Although the skirts all look the same. Doesn't, um, 
this skirt look a lot different than that skirt. Hmm. It doesn't say anything about having skirt options here. So crepe, chalet, stable knits, and cotton blends. Single fold bias tape, one inch elastic, and B for the sleeve gets um, three eighths inch elastic. So this is for the waistband, this is for the sleeve, and then you just have your bias tape. So yeah, I don't really know. Um, maybe it's maybe it is the way that they've tied it they kind of pulled more from here rather than from the sides i don't know that'd be one that i'd want to open up the instruction booklet in the store here's your finished garment measurements yeah that's a pretty close fitting skirt alphanumeric sizing extra small to extra large so Thank goodness for that elastic waistband, right? Otherwise, I'd never get the waist to fit, um, having to have the hip line so set at such a large size. All right, now we've got Marta. This handkerchief print, um, I feel like really had a moment last year, and I guess maybe it's sticking around a little bit longer. It's kind of cool, but it's like a shirt dress, and I think that's it. Maybe a sleeve tab, set in sleeves, collar, button down. Oh, Lord. Uh, but yeah, straight, no waist. Um, I don't even think there's any seaming other than this, and I don't, don't know how much shaping is built into this here. Did she do that? Is that what this is? That's crazy that they got that to fit, uh, match up like that. Gosh, this picture's blurry. Yeah, you can see it mostly in here where the seam line is. Well, good for them. Some talented sewists. All right, here's a yoke. Oh, this is a learn to sew level two, where you will learn a shaped hem and a collar and collar stand. And then, yeah, here are the line drawings. Oops, my bad, let me go back. Um, yeah, it's just a, what is it, sheath, shift? I always get those confused, um, design. And one little extra seam here for no reason. <laughs> I can't think of any real good reason. I'm sure there's like bust shaping built in there, but. Maybe it would be cool color blocked. And then you have the two different hems. Okay, cotton blends, crepe, chalet, and polished cotton. B, woven horizontal stripe, which is, I guess, B, woven horizontal stripe. What does that even mean? Is that because that's the one she's wearing? Yeah. So I guess they're saying you can, it's almost like um, when they give you fabric requirements for a border print, maybe in a way it tells you how to sew that. So that's kind of interesting for a learn to sew. Nine buttons, 11 buttons, 12 buttons. Six to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing. And then here's your fabric requirements. Typical for like a knee length dress. All right, more tiers. <laughs> Not T-E-A-R-S, but T-I-E-R-S. <laughs> and not crying over this one. I've definitely seen worse. Um, all right, so this is a V-neck uh, collar band and then ruffle here, another tier here, 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 
I don't think it buttons up the front. But sleeveless, but it also has a bit of a dropped, like a long shoulder, extended shoulder. Um, here it is with some trim. There's another version, different sleeve. I can't imagine it won't be comfortable, that's for sure. Doesn't that look just super comfy? This looks a little bit like indie. This is definitely taking a nod from um, some of the indie designs for sure. I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. I think that um, just to make it more my style, I'd have to pick like a different fabric, which is fine. I'd also double check the length because as we saw, she's very tall and this goes right to her knee. So for the rest of us, we might need to shorten it by a few inches unless they lengthened it for her, which I, I doubt. We don't have to worry about sizing that much, you know, cause it is so loose fitting. I think you really just want to make sure that through here and through your bust was okay. Gauze, linen, cotton blends, polished cotton. And then you need lace trim for version B. And then some bias tape. Alphanumeric sizing. And then considering it's a pretty voluminous dress, you really don't need a ton of fabric. I mean, two yards for the sleeveless version. I have that in my stash, I'm sure. I think what happened here is I did Butterick first and McCall's second. If I had done McCall's first, I think I would be raving about these a little bit more, but I'm not comparing them, but I'm comparing them. You know what I mean? Like I'm thinking in my head about all the Butterick patterns that I added to my wish list. And so if I don't see something like that or better, then I'm kind of not underwhelmed, but not overwhelmed. I'm just whelmed I guess <laughs> just whelmed they're not bad they're really not bad I'm just not like super excited about any of them except for a couple the pants are really sticking in my mind I think those pants will definitely happen for me which is exciting um okay so we've got a v-neck another like drop shoulder some kind of like wrap ish thing down into this little tulip hem Look at her hair. This is what I want my hair to look like. And before all of you say, your hair does look like that. My hair is not this thick. I have a lot of hair, but it's all thin. Well, that's certainly beautiful. I have that. I think it's a Butterick pattern that I made the navy and cream sateen. Do y'all remember that video by chance? That has a bodice like this. And I love that bodice so much it has a you know more traditional um cut in short sleeve or sleeveless but um and a pleated skirt but I do love 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 that bodice a lot very flattering here's one with a little sleeve on it yeah I don't know if this model just doesn't have as much of a waist but it's kind of looking like it's falling flat on her a little bit. Like all of these details got hidden and I don't really understand why. Gianna is the name of this one. I wonder if this is like a true wrap. The other one I have, like all these are sewn into the side. So you actually get in through a zipper in the back. This one, it looks like might be more of a true wrap, which is why it doesn't have the same effect. I don't know. But I'm not loving it on her at all. The line drawings look a lot better. Maybe it's the fabric?
yeah, maybe it's this wide, but you would think that would be even more of a hourglass situation. I don't know. This one is underwhelming on her. Hmm. That makes me think twice about this one. Charmeuse, Crepe, Chalet, and Stable Knit. Bias tape, 6 to 14, 14 to 22 on the sizing. And then like two and a half yards-ish for your fabric requirements. All right. Now we have, it looks like the one and only women's um, sized patterns, which I know you guys criticized Butterick a lot for only having two. Well, McCall's only has one. This is the Natala, Natala, again with the emphasis on the wrong syllable. I don't know which one it is, which is why the names are so difficult. But it looks like a jumpsuit obviously and in the early spring collection wasn't the only like plus size they had a jumpsuit remember it was like uh rose gold was that simplicity or mccall's i can't remember anyways this one's strapless uh button front and then contrast seaming there it is in a short with a strap there it is in a pant with this really fabulous belt. That just really elevates the whole look for me. Well, I'm not a huge fan of the sample version. I just don't think many curvy women want like huge, these aren't rectangles, but huge random shapes on their bum. This I was saying, okay, in my mind, I was like, this is a little bit flattering, calling out the curves and the, you know, vertical lines, make your eye go up and down. Okay, okay, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. And then I'm like, um, you lost me. But then, of course, you don't have to you know, stitchers like that for sure. Um, it's a cute design. This version here is going to look exceptional on lots of people. Maybe even me. I don't know. But I'm not going to make this strap, that's for sure. And I'm not going to add those stupid pockets with contrast stitching, that's for sure. Um, and the shorts version, I don't, that these don't go together. These are two different jumpsuits for me but this looks stunning especially in the right kind of fabric so let's see what they're asking for denim twill chino linen yeah i was picturing more of a chino and then it is the first time we've seen a freaking lining and there is boning okay well that's a little bit better they got something to hold the girls up hold this up over the girls i don't know where the boning is or if it's side seam boning or what but there is boning in there for all three versions so that's really promising and then you've got your buckle okay 8 to 16 and then 18 to 24 and based on what everyone was saying on my butter video when i was like wait a minute the other patterns are 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22 is one more size really that helpful and everyone was saying that the women's sizing is different this is not the same as a mrs 18. it would be like if you got a 10 in juniors and tried to compare it to a 10 in uh, misses not the same so but the poor people who wear a six they just they just get lopped off the end does any did anybody know anyone that wears a six in the calls no judging just curious if those people exist <laughs> um and then here's your fabric requirements you really don't need a lot of fabric again this is the one I would want to make, which of course you need three yards of, uh, or well, maybe two and a half. 
well, I don't know, I might be up in this area for my hips for sure. They didn't give any finished garment measurements though, so. And I think just the bodice is lined to help cover the boning. All right, next up our pen ultimate pattern we're going to discuss today. Lena. Lena is shorts and pants. Okay. So this looks to like um, elasticated waist, obviously. Slash pockets, a little, um, uh, what is that called? Military pocket, not a patch pocket, pleated pocket. I can't remember what this is called, but I do like the elasticated cuff, even though it is a little bit big on her. And then something here. Oh, back pocket. I mean, they made this out of satin, so there's a lot to be said for that. Those are kind of cute. Very Jenny from the block. This is more elevated in this like sanded satin, but I think you could probably make it in a ton of fabrics. I think she's really feeling it. This is super cute. The styling has been great. Oh, look at her hair go. Oh, she's like off the ground, right? Optical illusion. Lena. Yeah, this one's cute with the little tabs. And with an elasticated waist, I, that's where my problem is. Once I get it to fit through the hip and the crotch and the yada, 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 then my hips are, I mean, my waist is like a whole other issue. So when it's elasticated, I can just get it to fit here, get it to fit in the crotch, and I'm good to go. Side seam ribbon trim. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Okay. So twill, poplin, cotton blends, and denim. I don't think that's any of these, this fabric. Maybe it's some kind of cotton blend. Um, alphanumeric sizing. You need elastic, buttons, buttons, ribbon trim, and elastic. And it only goes from small to extra large. So they've left off the smallest and the largest sizes. And then no finished garment measurements available for you to be able to tell if you even fit into an extra large or a small. So you don't need any fabric for the short, which I love. Well, another little stash buster. All right. The last one here, are we gonna go out with a bang? I don't think so. <laughs> Ornella looks a lot like whatever, I already forgot the name of the last one, with the elasticated waist and the elasticated cuff. They've got the dad sneakers, which is like a whole thing. And then they've done a crop top with an elasticated hem and sleeve. I've seen this look before. It is very trendy, again, among the like 20, 25, 27-year-olds. Um, I feel like I've seen it on a bunch of celebrities too, like on talk shows, especially this, especially that. And I am not opposed to wearing that. I think that I could rock that, if I'm being honest. Um, I think it would look super cute on me, but... Where am I going to go in that? I'm not going to give interviews and talk show. Like I'm going to Target and Joanne and Goodwill. <laughs> Some dates with my boyfriend. <laughs> like what the heck, you know? But it could be cute for sure. So she's wearing a, and then there's a short and a pant. Or Nella. If you wanted to make a jumpsuit, find your waist measurements and add these two things together. That would be a good way to hack this. All right, you're gonna need 
Charmeuse, Cotton Blends, Stable Knits, and Shally. It actually, okay, okay. See, I'm always about finding the silver lining. I think this could make a really cute and interesting like sweatsuit. Imagine it in sweatshirt fleece or French terry. Okay, that could be cute, right? If you're going to bar class or if you take hip hop dance lessons or I don't know, if you live in the city, you could you could rock something like this for sure in a in a more casual fabric. Maybe even like a denim or a chambray. I'm just thinking maybe not this shiny situation, something a little bit more, uh, maybe less, something less in your face and shiny. <laughs> okay, so you need a ton of elastic, basically. And then the sizing is six to 14 and 14 to 22. You need like no fabric for the top and pretty much a yard for the short or a couple yards-ish for the pant. I would want to try this in a stable knit. That's what made me think of it, stable knit. It could be cool, right? Fun little take on sweats, possibly. Okay, but with that, that wraps up McCall's Spring Collection 2020. Um, kind of already gave you my general thoughts. Where's the lookbook? Are they not doing lookbooks anymore? Oh, lookbooks. Um, we'll see if I can find it here. But my general consensus is that this is only not knocking my socks off because I saw butter at first. So if you're like me and fell in love with the butter collection, I can I think that we will probably agree that this is a little bit underwhelming. There are certainly cute elements, but nothing that makes me feel like, oh, I don't already have this, or oh, this wouldn't be easy just to make myself, or you know, this is something like that though, where I wouldn't know how to make it on my own. So I'm here for learning how to do that. So there were bright spots, but overall it feels like they kind of, oh, in the pants, I can't forget the pants. So three, three patterns so far, but overall it kind of feels like they went back to, not back to basics. There's not basic like simplicity, but they went back to uh, what is um, going to be liked most by the masses, almost like with a clean slate. Like let's pretend we've never made a McCall's pattern ever before and that no one's ever bought any of our patterns before. And we just wanted to attract these millennial sewists. You know, what would that collection look like? Don't worry if we've already done it. Don't worry if people already have it in their stash somewhere. Let's just start with a clean slate and build from that, which is a very fair decision to make, especially with a rebrand and all of that. Like you have to have a very, very clear vision um, without any of the other stuff getting in the way. So that, that, that's my thought. So I did like the halter version of this too, and the pants and the lace top. the jumpsuit version of this, but I'm not going to buy this pattern just for that. I have jumpsuits. Yeah, that's probably it. I mean, maybe this, if it's, I find it on sale, maybe the sweatsuit, if I find it on sale, but let me know what you guys thought. Let me know if you will be buying any of these. Let me know your general thoughts. Let me know how you're thinking things are going with, you know, all the change and shakeup that's been going out, going on in the big four. Um, just want to hear your all your thoughts. Leave them in the comment section below. And that's going to do it for me today. But I will see you all very soon. Bye.